Oh, look out now. It's the Bourbon and Banner podcast, the most honest podcast in all of bourbon. That's right, folks. We've got everything you need to drink curious right here. This is your source for straight up, no BS commentary on the bourbon world. So sit back, grab a pour, and check your feelings at the door because we're here to lay it down for you as only bourbon and banner can. And now your host, not just the most honest team in bourbon, but the biggest one too, especially since they just put away enough biscuits, breakfast meat, eggs, and gravy to feed a small army. The meat sweats are real, but so is the biscuit belly, and these two are living proof. Here they are. Okay, hold on, Bob. We just... Slow down. That was a lot of shit, but we have to seriously stop and talk about these biscuits. Uh, you know, uh, so we we will give props to the name Biscuit Belly. And for those down in the Louisville area, they may know what, what we're talking about here. But uh, we had all that and more. Two days. Two days. Two days in a row for breakfast. And, and what I came away with from in those two days was that... The more shit that is put on the biscuit, the better the dish is. Yesterday, <laughs> yesterday it was just the uh, the uh, fried chicken and the bacon and the egg, and today I added the brisket and the sausage to that. And yeah, was that all good? Your, I, didn't, I mean, your, I didn't get a chance here. Was that all that of much your meat better? groups? All of your meat groups working on that biscuit? Yes, indeed. It uh-huh. is, yes, indeed, it is better. Well, you know, yesterday was a light day for me. I just got the uh, sausage and cheese and egg on the biscuit today i upgraded with the chicken and the gravy and the bacon and it was damn good and for for those who aren't down here once you what tell them what biscuit belly is because you know they're not going to google this shit no yeah they should you're listening to us on spotify or just pull your damn phone out and google biscuit belly there is a number of restaurants in the greater louisville area uh great food great food good coffee good everything very, uh, very, very tasty, and we've been several times, and uh, if we come down to bourbon country, in addition to some drinking, we're definitely having some biscuits before we go. That's right, and if anybody from Biscuit Belly is listening to this, we are open uh, for endorsements. That's right. You know, biscuits and bourbon, I think there's an event there. Absolutely, So, and, and we are men built for the job. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Absolutely. I judge a restaurant often by the look in their eye when we walk in. And if it's fear, I know it's not a good place. But when they smile and they're like, oh, fuck, yeah. Yeah, because, see, usually when people see us walk into a place, there is fear. <laughs> you know, he's, oh, I'm sorry, we ran out of this, that, and the other because those two guys just left. So, you know. That's right. So, well, we are fully charged with that. And, obviously, we spent a great uh, uh, time with Art Eatables um, as well. So that was good. But that'll more about that later. Um, but tell us, Bob, why the hell are we all together? 10th anniversary. That's right. 10th anniversary bourbon and banter, folks. That's right. So we have assembled the majority of our team. A few of our members, unfortunately, couldn't make the trip, but we're down in Louisville. We're staying at the official bourbon and banter manor house, courtesy of Matt Evans and his lovely, lovely family. But we are hunkered down with bourbon, as far as the eye can see, in a gorgeous house with at least 14-foot ceilings and doors, um, a wild uh, rooster. Yes, yes, there's a cock roaming around here everywhere. That's right, and uh, sort of a fighting cock, if we really... Yes, yes, it is, yes, it is. That's right. So we're all down here celebrating tonight. Uh, It's going to be our big bottle share um, event, celebrating 10 wonderful years. It's hard to believe we're here at, at, God, 10 full years. I mean, it's amazing. A decade, a decade of decadence. That's right, the liver still uh, is alive. People said it couldn't be done. It can be, believe us, it can be, because we're professionals, and... The honest and biggest podcast in bourbon, folks. That's right. Just based off of the biscuit belly, we're even bigger than we were before we did the last podcast. We are the honest and biggest podcast in bourbon. Did we That's say the right. plus size uh, episode? Yes, the plus size episode. Absolutely. Well, so we, we've been talking about our upcoming anniversary for a while now, and it is within uh, within sight, just a mere weeks, couple of weeks away. So. More to come on that. We've got some really cool things that we're going to be announcing and launching for that. So we hope you guys will all um, participate in that as we continue to do that. Another quick update I want to get everyone for our Single Barrel Club is we just got word actually yesterday that our Yellowstone Barrel um, arrived. This is the one that uh, Jim Rutledge was kind enough to accompany us on and help us pick. So if you haven't joined the Single Barrel Club, you're going to want to join that as soon as possible because where else are you going to get a single barrel pick that Jim Rutledge helped pick 
that wasn't four roses? I don't know of one that's happened. That's right. That, wa- that wasn't a four roses thing or wasn't a creamy Kentucky. That's true. That's right. But he was doing that all on his own. So here's actually with us plebeians doing the Lord's work, you know, for free. So we appreciate that. So if you're not a member, join. But we also have, within a couple days, we're going to get our, our old Ezra and our Rebel pick are going to be in as well. And then we did get a con- confirmation that by the end of the summer, we should have our Wyoming whiskey uh, barrel pick done with hopefully a uh, arrival date of right around the holidays. Yeah, and to my knowledge, and it, you know, at least for those of you in the greater St. Louis area where we're based out of, um, that I don't believe there's been a Wyoming uh, private pick in St. Louis yet. So be on the lookout for that one. It's mighty, mighty tasty. We, we are fans, and uh, we're really looking forward to that. And then the last one is the one we picked last night, right? The mullets. I'm sorry, Stellum pick. <laughs> Stellum pick. That's right. So um, a couple weeks ago, I wrote a very, very glowing review of Stellum, which is the new expression line from the folks at Barrel uh, Spirits. And it's a blend of several different bourbons together at fifty four ninety nine. To me, for this year, when you look at taste, and cost value um it's probably for me one of the best things that's come out this year so we didn't pick a blend um that requires a much larger commitment we're looking at doing that for next year but we did pick a single barrel um it is an mgp barrel full transparency there and it was really really amazing what we picked last night and that'll be coming in about 60 to 90 days as well to the Barrel Club, and there's a few of these out there. There's not a lot out right now from the Stellan brand. So if you're interested in that, uh, make sure you join the club as well. All right, so, and the last thing is, uh, if you have not dropped us a note saying, hey, I want to join the Bourbon and Banter members community, please do so. Just drop us a note at uh, podcast at bourbonbanter.com and say, hey, I want into the members community. We'll get you hooked up. You can join like-minded folks who like truth, transparency, and I like to have some fun and don't want to deal with bullshit. That's right. And no crotch shots whatsoever. No crotch shots, no bullying, and no thread shitting. Guaranteed because you'll be kicked out. That's right. And as opposed to other groups where they just, you know, ban you online, we physically will come find you and kick you out of the group. That's right. We've got a machete. It's all ready to go. <laughs> so a very and dull it's, machete. It's a very dull machete. That's right. You'll so be bludgeoned to death. You'll be bludgeoned. Yeah, you won't be slit open. You won't be cut open, but you'll be bludgeoned from bourbon and banter if you try any of that shit. So <laughs> yeah, we're absolutely. coming for you. All right. So, hey, so join us. We, we'd love to have you there. And once again, if you have not recommended this podcast to someone else and you're still listening, what are you waiting for? Go to Apple Podcast, subscribe, subscribe on Spotify, and leave us a review. Um, that feedback helps get us more visible, gets more people listening to that, more people listening to that, allows us to do cooler things, and uh, the cooler things we do, the more fun you're going to have. That's right. You know, you know somebody wants to hear the truth about the bourbon industry from the most honest and biggest podcast in bourbon. And, you know, just anecdotally, I had a couple meetings this week with some folks, and I mentioned the podcast, and I was shocked that some of these people were listening to it. Um, and they were like, you guys are funnier than shit. We love it. Keep it coming. Now they haven't been the root of any of our entertainment pieces yet, yet. Um, but they soon will be, but I was told that they were good with that. Well, see now you're opening the floodgates. If you're okay with it, we're going to come at you. Leave your feelings at the door. That's right. So, well, let's go ahead and head over. And, uh, why don't we dive a little bit into the whiskey news? All right, folks, we're going to dive into some whiskey news here, and hopefully we keep you entertained as well as informed. All right, so I came across this one the other day saying, Drunk Review, could alcohol-induced creativity be key to civilization? What say you, Bob? Well, yeah, because it's going to bring out the truth, bring out, lose the, inhib- the inhibitions, bring out the truth, and, and do all of that. And, of course, whiskey is key to creativity. All right, well, now let's ask a real expert what they think about this. According to this gentleman... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You just had, and Now you're going to ask a real expert? I'm not a real expert? Well, on donuts. I'm hurt. You hurt? I'm crushed by this. Well, have another drink. <laughs> have another drink, as they say, and call someone that cares. 
Wow. That's right. That's my wow. one, one and only Travis Tritt reference for today. I was going to say, here's today. a quarter. Call <laughs> someone who cares. And see, now you get singing. I mean, come on, guys. What else do you Call want? Call someone who will listen and might give a fuck. See, we change up the lyrics. <laughs> there we go. All right, so this uh, philosopher at the University of British Columbia in Canada is named Slingerland. Yeah, Slingerland. I wonder if he's ever had a slinger. Well, no, I'm immediately thinking is he got clearance from the drum company to use that name. You know, Slingerland is some legendary, amazing drums. And maybe he's a descendant. Could be a descendant. That's right. Well, so he argues um, that by humans, by causing humans to become at least temporarily more creative, cultural, and communal, intoxicants provided the spark that allowed us to form truly large-scale groups. So in short, without them, civilization may not have been possible now i i think he's right but i would have summed it up a different way that booze allows us to put up with each other you know i think that that's absolutely correct yes because what's the first thing you say after you deal with a whole bunch of bullshit god i need a drink i need a drink so or you're going to in-laws thank god there's going to be booze that's right that's right you got to hide it in the flash in your back pocket because you got to get through the holidays Mm -hmm. absolutely so i think he's onto some so i always love it when academia supports our habits you know so along with that because obviously we need more civilization now than ever have having been locked down for so long uh, some data has come in uh, showing that uh, u.s total beverage alcohol consumption in 2020 was the largest volume gained in nearly 20 years that's right i'll say it again take that ireland we are the drinkers on the globe i've never been more proud to be an american that's right lee greenwood sing it for us and i'm proud to be an american where at least i'm off key well there you go that was actually kind of nice you weren't too bad i mean so we actually went up two percent which that's a huge number to move a full two points there um and uh let's see what else they have to say here um and yeah go u.s and everyone else sucks. All right, so that's the end of that one. Moving along, the next thing is um, China, right? We were last in the news with China with them um, taking our fireball, yeah, right? Yeah. So uh, evidently, China's most famous liquor fetches nearly $1.4 million at an auction. You know what, though? That was going to fetch 900000 It fetched the other half million because it was a wax top. <laughs> Look, China's got a tater bottle. I wonder what the word would be if you translate that uh, to China for tater. You got to look that up. That's I don't right. Know. Hey, so, you know, anybody who speaks Chinese can give us a drop us a note, podcast at bourbonbanter.com, and say, what would be a way to translate that into Chinese for tater? Um, and if you can do it, we might use that in a future podcast title. That would be kind of fun. But they say that a rare case of China's fiery national liquid has sold for more than 1 million more than five times what experts had estimated it would fetch. Now, we've been hearing this a lot. The experts saying, oh, my God, it went for so much more. I need, they think they need some new fucking experts. I think so. I think somebody is lowballing shit on this, and they need to get their stuff together. Yeah, I mean, this is crazy. And I don't know if you guys have ever had this liquid, um, but this is, uh, you know, the brand is um, Mutai, um, which is, you know, I think the most popular company that makes this uh, product in China. And, uh, you know, it's 53% alcohol and tastes like fire. So, hey, um, Fireball, obviously, is going to fit right in. Uh, but Fireball doesn't taste like fire. 53% alcohol. That can't possibly taste like fire. What are they putting in it? Well, that's what I thought, too. See, I'm glad. I read it, too. I was like, fucking amateurs? Yeah. I, they. Uh, okay. Even vodka. I mean, that, that doesn't taste... Yeah, but anyway, so moving on. So um, if you're looking to make an investment in something, there's other, uh, obviously, investments other than whiskey, wine, and scotch. Um, so the other thing that was kind of cool to see was Liquor Barn was sold to national delivery service GoPuff uh, recently. And uh, so Liquor Barn is a Louisville-based company, and they've been Kentucky's leading independent chain of beer, wine, and liquor stores. And GoPuff is a Philadelphia-based company that, for a flat $1.95 fee delivers a wide variety of items ranging from food and drink to pet products, cleaning supplies, and over-the-counter medications. Okay, and it's not a courier service, but rather it delivers directly from its 275-plus micro-fulfillment centers located in more than 185 locations. So they've acquired Liquor Barn 
to give them a presence in Kentucky and to become one of those dis- distribution centers. I, I'm really hoping. It's a Philadelphia-based company, GoPuff is. Mm-hmm. So if we can do what people long for, really long for, which is whiskey and cheesesteaks delivered together, <laughs> then I think we have finally, finally reached a pinnacle for home delivery service. Pat's or Geno's? Neither. Oh. From what I'm told, neither. I've not had either, but I'm told, you know, those are the ones that are most well-known. Well, right. there's got to be another local hole-in-the-wall joint that the locals go to when Pat's and Geno's are full of tourists, so I don't know. Whiz, provolone? No, it's get the fucking whiz. Come on. There's a reason it's called whiz, right? Because you just piss that shit out. No, give me some fucking provolone. Uh, fair enough. Well, I don't know if anybody knows this, but Go Puff, if you think about the name, what comes to mind, Bob? Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Really? Yeah, for me, that's what comes to mind. Uh, see, what that comes to mind is puff, 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 give, motherfucker. Oh, shit. Well, Come on, go puff. This was a business started to get food late at night to stoners in college campuses. See, uh, and that's not me. So, as you can tell, I never yeah, had a problem getting food late at night. Come on, you would definitely enjoy late night delivery service of M&M's and Snicker bars. Well, maybe, but. Well, I mean, when you run out. Steaks, cheese steaks. Cheese right. steaks would be better. All right, well. The rumor I've gotten, and I'm, I'm so pleased that I beat you to the punch in this one, is that by moving in Kentucky, they decided they wanted to do something that would honor both Kentucky and their origin as a stoner company. So they're actually working with Willet, and they're going to create a modified version of their pot still bottle that once you drink the whiskey with just one minor modification, it becomes a bong. Yeah, I knew right where that was Fulfilling going. Fulfilling everyone's dream to not have to fucking drill the glass because it cracks. I mean, that's genius. I mean, that is, once again, the marketing wizards, um, are they're everywhere in this industry. So I can't wait to see that. Um, there's no word yet if they're going to come in different sizes because um, I know a few guys who would like to have like a four-foot one. Um, I don't know how you ship that. Uh, but maybe that's where the courier, the hand delivery service comes in. Maybe. Maybe it's the ground the ground shipping service, yes. I, I personally would love to see a Willet gravity bong. Um, that would be <laughs> fucking fantastic. <laughs> then maybe I could actually see how one works. All right, so I'm going to move into a little uh, whiskey release news here. Um, Old Forester announced they're releasing a single barrel rye nationwide. Um, and this is going to be the first innovation of this rye recipe since the original 100 proof uh, release. This is going to be unfiltered and at barrel strength and available nationwide. So that's kind of cool. But it is going to be limited quantity. So no surprise there. Of course it is. Right. Um, and so this one is 100 proof and uh, it's going to be available starting June 1st. So by the time you're listening to this, it's out there and you've probably missed it. My apologies. Um, at going to be available at the old forester distilling company shop and in retailers near you um msrp is 79.99 uh, i imagine the secondary market will qu- quickly climb in the 200 dollars plus range um, but we should have a review of it up uh, soon if not by the time you are listening to these words so check that out also a uh, smith bowman cast strength bourbon is uh, the latest release from the virginia's oldest distillery um, so this is going to be aged for a minimum of 10 years with barrels hand-selected by master distiller Brian Pruitt. Um, the cast strength will be an annual release, bottled, uncut, and non-chilled filtered. Um, this first one coming out at the end of June is going to be at 141.1 proof. So that sounds really, really tasty. And the retail price is going to be $99.99. So once again, um, still a little steep for my opinion, but I'm glad they kept it under the $100 price point, and we'll see if the juice lives up to the reputation. Once again, compared to what's in the market, right? I mean, Bob could literally name several barrel-proof whiskeys, um, you know, off the top of his head that are better for a lot cheaper. He just did it the other night. But, you know, we have to understand some of this pricing pressure. So we'll see how it stacks up to some of the other releases that cost as much, if not more. And then uh, another one that I'm kind of excited about is Chattanooga, Chattanooga Whiskey is excited to announce our Bottled and Bond Spring 2017 Vintage. So this is going to be the first release of their Bottled and Bond Vintage series. It's uh, crafted at the Riverfront Distillery, and it's going to be a new and permanent addition to their whiskey family brands. Now, this is going to be barreled uh, January through June 2017, 100 proof, and it is, of course, their Tennessee High Malt Expression, which I am a huge fan of, right? 
So this is going to be another great addition into that family. And it's going to be at $49.99 for $750, which I think is an excellent price point for this whiskey. If you have not had this, when this whiskey first came out a couple of years ago, it was my favorite release. Um, their high malt was my favorite release of the year. And uh, enjoyed it a lot. So I'm glad to see a mid-level proof being released as well. They're doing some nice stuff with, with uh, Chattanooga whiskey. So, yeah, props to them. I'm Absolutely. Sure taste that. Now, I know I kind of scooped you on the GoPuff and the Willet thing, and I apologize, Bob. But everybody's got to have their moment in the sun. So what do you got for me this week? Well, you know, so being down here, uh, you know, folks, we have having our ears closer to the ground than ever. Um, we learned about something that uh, I was not expecting, but when I heard about it naturally, of course, uh, it made a lot of sense. And that is the Yankee Candle Company um, coming off – a, a very strong year. The pandemic was down for a lot of people, but Yankee Candle was actually up. You know, people in their homes using a lot more candles, setting them, you know, moods and, and uh, scents and things. So with a very, very decent uh, year of growth, revenue growth, um, they're continuing their success by releasing a line of easy-to-use wax products for the exploding bur- bourbon market. So they're launching Yankee Candle bottle wax. Wow. Didn't see that coming. Yeah, the, the new line of Easy Flex Wax, which has been codenamed Tater Wax, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> of course, you know, what else would it be named? Oh, Especially, fuck. you know, at least in, in inner circles, you know. It's specially designed for easy dipping of private barrel selections and will come off easily without the need, you know, for those difficult tear straps. You know, those things just, they're, they're nothing but a pain in the ass. So the wax is going to be, you're going to warm it, you know, one of two ways. Just warm it with your hand. Or what, especially what we think a lot of these private barrel picks will be doing is warming it with their crotch shots. <laughs> so, oh, man. You know, they're going to warm it up, and then it's going to, the wax will react in a way with the warmth to where you can then just twist the top right off. Uh, and you don't have to cut it. You don't have to do anything like that. Well, I do like that. Because, like, you know, I've, I don't know how many times I've almost lost a thumb cutting off wax from one of these fucking tater yeah. bottles. Yeah, it, it gets, it's ridiculous. And even some of the ones that, that aren't even the tater bottles, just the regular ones, you know, I, I wind up doing the same thing with. Um, adding to the intrigue, though, is that Yankee Candle has been taking aroma samples for years, apparently, from the major distilleries. Um, and so they're going to be infusing the wax with a light scent to match the essence of the Rick House, where the bottles came from, where, where some of them, you know, um, uh, there are more generic scents like high rye, weeded, four grain, sawdust, and you know, burning cash for craft distillery bottles. <laughs> uh, you know, and that just got up and running last week. So you know, they've been into Four Roses, they've been into Beam, they've been into into uh, Woodford and Makers, and and they've tried to do that. You know, for all the things. So uh, they're scheduling this to launch in time for the holidays, and the initial release is going to feature waxes for Four Roses, Heaven Hill, and Barton, seventeen ninety two. Um, They're working on an agreement with Wild Turkey, but uh, apparently Jimmy is rumored to be blocking the deal. You know, we we heard from from a a very good, reliable source who's a a close friend of Jimmy's. He says, you know, we don't have time for this wax nonsense. Just drink the damn bourbon. Open the (laughs) bottle, drink it, leave all this wax nonsense alone. Very much, Jimmy. Uh, I I have to assume, I don't know if you know this, but I would have to imagine they are going to not offer a red wax. I, I would think they couldn't. I mean, the, the, the whole thing, and, and if this thing, they, they, apparently they've been working very closely um, with reps from Makers because they don't want to infringe on that copyright. But, right. but, and Makers knows that people are doing wax all over the place, so they don't want that. In fact, the way that they're going to do this is it, in, it includes an additional thicker plastic strip that you place about a halfway down the neck so it's designed to stop the wax there the wax can't drip loosely down it can't continue to so it's going to be able to there to mold it to set it and so it is a clean cut it won't infringe on the on the maker's trademark of the dripping uh, the dripping wax and they agreed not to do a red one okay so well I, i think this is interesting timing because as everybody has heard you know uh, Four Roses sent out those letters about not putting the stickers in the bottles yep. and putting them on retail shelves. So this becomes an interesting way to customize, personalize, if you will, your barrel pick with a scented uh, wax, which it's a little hard for me to wrap my head around, you know, the, the whole smell thing. But what I'm thinking is we need to do is we need to create a, uh, a wax stamp company where people can go online 
and customize a wax stamp with you know it's like the new tater sticker right yeah and wax stamp so we'll be interesting to see if we do that if uh we'll get some competitions but that'd be kind of interesting and i'm wondering if they're going to develop it to where they start including other you know landmark yankee candle scents is there going to be you know the the white lily candle and things like that (laughs) And so you're going to, you know, have a white, so, so really you get some floral. Is it going to impart some new, you know, <laughs> nose, nosing notes on some of these bottles and coming through that wax? So who knows? It's, I think it's, it's, it's an endless possibility. Yeah, they better be careful. If they get too, too hoity-toity with this, it's going to backfire them. But I tell you what, anybody can bring a wax to the market. If you insist on using one that is easy to open, you, it's a game changer. Absolutely. Because I don't know why Maker's Mark is the only person, the only company on the planet that puts wax on a bottle that's easy to open. Because I love Michter's stuff, and but that freaking Michter's wax, that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. I mean, I've got to get like a carving knife out with a motor to get that fucker open. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You, you get into the Thanksgiving drawer and get out the carving knife and bzzz, you know, that's what you've got to do to get it, to try to get that even, even penetrate. And half the time that doesn't work. You know what? I want to hear from the listeners in this one. If you have a really funny story, and, and I'm sorry if it's tragic as well, even better. But if you have a mishap story of trying to open up a bottle and wax, drop us a note, podcast at bourbonbanter.com, and let us know. And we'll read them on the air. We've got to, yeah, we got to talk to my friend Four Finger Frankie. He's got a great story about <laughs> how he tried to do that. And so, you know, there's no thumbs. Tom, he was pretty good with it. And it's, uh, yeah, there's a couple of people that I can turn you on to with that. No, I think, I think we interest. Let us know about your, uh, your mishaps and your near misses and, and we'll get them on the air. Well, Bob, that, that was, that was well done. Um, but I, I have to apologize again. I got one more. Oh, I got man. one more. And you just got to keep one up well, with me. On I this got this shit. one last night. I've been holding it off. I didn't want you to know about it. So when we did the Stellan pick last night, I was talking to the reps and we got to talking and I said, Hey, you know, I know your whole branding is around Stellum and stars. And I said, but you do realize that name backwards spells mullets, right? And he just started laughing. I said, please tell me there's a story there. And he's like, no, there's no story there. There, You know, it's just, that's just happens the way it's going to be. And he goes, but you know, um, we've been getting a lot of inquiries about it. And he, and he said, and so we thought it'd be kind of fun to do something around it. Just, just, just you know, shits and giggles type thing. He goes, everybody's getting back to bars and whatnot, and people haven't had real haircuts. So we thought it would be fun um, if we did a promotion that if you show up um, at a bar where we're at with a mullet, um, you're going to get a free pour of Stellan bourbon. And I thought, holy shit, really? You guys are going to have the balls to do that? And he said, absolutely. Um, so, you know, folks, if you have a mullet or you're getting ready to cut your hair, and you can deal with a mullet for a couple days. All right, keep an eye out on their website. Um, you know, I was looking at um, the the date here, and I think and I'm going to pull up my calendar real quick because I don't want to. I want to. He told me the like the weekend. It's not going to be right at the Fourth of July because there wasn't enough time to pull it off. But if I look at it, okay, yeah, he said the second weekend, so that would be the weekend of July 10th. Okay, so I believe it was going to be July 10th. And they were going to offer this um, in the evening uh, between 8 and 10 p.m. only um, at the Dundee Tavern. Now, um, I'm not sure, and I don't know anything about the Dundee Tavern, but if you show up on July 10th between 8 and 10, um, go in and go up to at the bar and ask for Jeff. Jeff will be there. Apparently, he's got a mullet. And if you ask him for the Stellum special um, and he sees you have a mullet, he's going to give you that free pour. Um, and you know, if he's busy and you can't get the Jeff, that's just to say, I'm here for the, the Stellan mullet special. They're going to be able to hook you up. So July 10th, eight to 10 PM, the Dundee Tavern, um, and enjoy because I love that product and, you know, getting to try it for free. That's even better. That's great. I can't believe they're, they're, they're willing to do that because we've seen quite a few mullets around since we've been down here. So there's, there's some, there's well, some back folks, in style, yeah. especially with the young folks. Yeah, I know the mullet and the rat tail too, you know, that's, that's just been People are, are, are dying the rat tail, multiple different colors and twirling it in, you know, especially for Pride Month. And mm-hmm. So it's, it's a lot going on. So Well, and do us a favor. When you get that free pour, um, or if for whatever reason you can't be there, on July 10th, take a picture of you with a mullet, with a drink, okay? Tag Bourbon Banter and Drink Curious, and then also tag Stellum. And, um, you know, we'll see if we can somehow get something out to you um, for doing that. 
as a celebration if you can't get there and get your free drinks. That'd be great. So that's all I've got. I'm not going to one-up you anymore. I'm done for now, Bob. Well, I'm sorry. That, I just do yeah. your thunder just a little bit. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's a nice bit to end our whiskey news on. All right, folks, it's time for the craft shoot. You know the deal. We get a whiskey blindly labeled. It's a craft distillery, and we drink it. We tell you what we think about it, and then only after we've shared what we think, unbiased, unfiltered, and honestly, we then discover what this product is going to be. So, Bob, you ready to do the craft shoot? There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, give it a nose. I'm getting floral. Floral. Very, Very parfumé. Parfumé. Maybe a little soapy, but I think more floral than anything else. Yeah, I get the floral. I get some spice, some nice um, rye spice, perhaps. A little, little, just a light mintiness on the edge. It smells good. I mean, promising. I mean, if this is craft, I would not have uh, necessarily guessed it right off the nose. A little bit of grandma's liniment oil. Uh, what about bit, the ball bearings? Little, no, a little bit of that old folks type of thing here. I right, go ahead and give it a sip of that's definitely not what I was expecting. Very, very <laughs> sweet up front. Very mm. sweet up front. Mm-hmm. Not a ton on the finish, but a little fruity on the finish. But like bright fruits, not dark fruits. More like, you know, apricots and shit like that. Pears. Yeah, that's def- that the, the nose and the palate are completely uh, different for me. I'm not getting anything on the nose on the palate. Well, now as I go back and nose it a little bit, it's a little sweeter in the nose. Some vanilla come peeking out of it. I, on the palate, I great. I think you're right. It's sweet <clears throat> up front, especially. Yeah, up front it's very sweet, but then it gets a, a rush of of summer fruit. Really is what I mm-hmm. is what I'm getting. Light fruit. I get a lot of um, I get a lo- lot of rice spice in this one, and then as it goes into the finish, I'm picking up a little bit of bitterness. I'm not picking up the traditional like heavy oak notes or anything, or or young oak notes. Just a little bit of bitterness, which I don't like. I wish it. The, I wish the sweetness and the spice would just mingle and stay there without that bitterness. But it's not overly off-putting. It's just enough to notice it. Yeah. But it's not bad. I mean, it, I, I think it's actually enjoyable. I mean, I we drink a lot of stuff, right? Yeah, we do. Um, and I would probably say this is one of the best we've had, if not the best, in the craft shoot. For the craft shoot, yeah, absolutely. yeah, this is not bad at all. And I, I, I wouldn't have a problem sipping this a couple pours in a row. No, no problem. No. In fact, I would buy a bottle of this. Absolutely, not a problem. Now the question well, you know, is: You know what I'm going to say, right? I don't know if I'd buy a bottle because it depends on what the price is. That's true. That's true. So, all right. Well, let's go ahead and um, find out what it is. All right. So we are drinking. Oh, this is cool. Uh, we are finally. I get to try it. Um, Frey Ranch. Straight rye whiskey. Now, you know anything about these guys? I, I'm not. I, I've, I've just seen a little bit here and there, but no, I'm not really familiar. So this is a guy who owns a family um, f- farm, call it ranch estate, out in uh, Fallon, Nevada, which is uh, where Top Gun is, the flight school for the Navy is out there. And his family, I know this because I've visited them years ago before their stuff was ready. And it's one that, I went out there, spent a lot of time with them, really liked the product, where it was going, came back, had some things happen with my family, and never got around to putting a post together. So it's like the one thing I've done that I feel a little embarrassed about never doing. So I was always like, once I get my hand on the mature product, we'll kind of come back, revisit, tell the story. So I guess now I have to do that. But um, the family that runs this, they're fantastic. The family has owned the land that the ranches are well back to before Nevada was a state and so they're in the desert man farm in the desert right and their fields are sunken because they're flood irrigated and they come out at night and they open up the the gates to let the water in and one end of the 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 field is higher than the other so that the water when it comes in will flow downhill and soak everything makes sense Um, but what's really cool is everything that goes into these bottles is a hundred percent estate grown it's crazy to think about estate grown in nevada right where you're growing anything estate grown anything except like you know 
casino chips and cards. <laughs> and I mean, right. I didn't know they grow anything in the desert. No, and he um, will ch- he for years experimented with growing different grains. I, he was like, like yeah, we changed the corn we were growing because I wanted a different starch content. So instead of having to go to other people and have it done, he does it all himself, even to the extent that they take the the, the, the the slop from the mashing process and they give it to the farm next door, which have cows, and then they get the manure from the cows and they use it and spray it on the fields as fertilizer. Um, and so it's like a true life cycle, which I thought is pretty cool. I usually didn't geek out about stuff like that, but it was so fascinating. And they even go as far as like, oh, we wanted to do some malted stuff. And buying a malting machine or having something done is really expensive. So we just created our own machine, this giant rolling malting machine that they built. And they created a four grain malted whiskey that I tried. So the corn, the rye, the wheat, and the barley, the malted barley, everything was malted and mixed together. And I think they only made like one barrel and I got to sample it. It It's like two years old. It was the funkiest and coolest thing I've ever tried in my life. Not for, they're not going to be for public consumption, but it was truly amazing. Um, but this is their rye, and I'm sure I had this when I was there, and I'm sure it was tasting good where it was going. But this is, according to their website, um, 100% winter cereal rye, and this is bottled and bond. That's 100% rye whiskey. Yep. Wow. Because that, that doesn't taste like 100% rye whiskey. You know me and rye whiskey. That's we, right. We don't all, you we don't, you often, don't like it. We don't often get along. Right. I, mean, I don't mind it, but it's certain things. Like, I like rye whiskeys that drink more like bourbons. I don't like that real real strong rye uh, flavor. But that's, um, yeah, knowing that, then that's even more shocking. No, not only the desert thing, but knowing that that's 100% rye bash bill. Right, and it's bottled in bond, so 100 proof, at least four years old. I'm looking for an age statement here, and I'm not, um, I'm not getting one. Um, exactly how old it is, but it's at least four years old, right? Because bottle in the bond has to be at least four, um, but it can be older. Um, but when it comes to proof, it has to be exactly a hundred proof. Um, and what's the MSRP? On? That's what I'm looking for right now. So I apologize to everybody in listening land because once again, we don't know what these are going to be coming into it. Um, all right. So apparently, um, this one is the suggested retail is going to the suggested retail on this one is going to be sixty dollars. Um, but I just did a Google search and found some places selling it for a lot more. And I do recall someone telling me that this is going in the secondary market for two three hundred dollars. Oh come on, man! I'm not not their pricing sixty bucks for that, no. especially considering what everything is going into that. I would buy that. That's reason. Yeah, I would buy that. But three hundred dollars. Secondary people, would you just knock this shit off? All because it's up and coming, not because it deserves it. No, nothing off them. But yeah, you're right. Sixty dollars. Once again, not often impressed with craft, um, but this, you know, they've done it right. It's bottled and bond. They've given it some time. Everything, as you said, you go, you know, that goes into it. And having met them and seen what they're building and what they're trying to do, yeah, I have no problem paying 60 bucks for that i want to go to the nate to the to the farm that's the neighbors where they use the the mash for feed for the cows and then use the manure and get a shirt that says our shit help makes this whiskey <laughs> i know a guy with a t-shirt shop we can make that there happen. you go there you go and happen well well done um to, to Frey ranch yeah nice job for doing this and uh glad to have you here and we're gonna have to do something a little bit more formal around this now that we've got our lips on it and whatnot because uh Definitely check it out if you get your hands on a bottle for the sixty dollars. Um, you'll, I think, you'll be pleased with it. So, all right, folks, if you have a recommendation for the craft shoot, um, make sure to call your local distillery and tell them they need to, to uh, step up to the line and send us a sample, and uh, we will give them honest feedback. Um, and uh, maybe they'll be like Free Ranch here and get a glowing endorsement from uh, Bob and myself via the craft shoot. All right, folks, if you've stuck around this long, you know what time it is. It's time for bourbon bullshit. That's right. The intergalactic number one podcast segment in all the world. That's right, boys and girls. If you're not listening to this segment, you need to know that there are cooler people, things, aliens out there in the universe that are hip to this. And you know what? When they come down here and take us over, you're going to be left behind. And that is not going to be a good thing. Wow. That's a hell of a buildup. 
but it's worth it. If All it's right, time well, for I'm coming bullshit. in hot. I'm coming in hot today. It's time for some bullshit. Go at him, Pops. All right, so you know that we are huge fans of award shows. And, you know, the, weir- the real winners of award shows are the people who fucking run them. Because no one does an award show out of the kindness of their heart. But I'm not going there today. I'm not going to go to the fact that hundreds of people, if not thousands of brands, spend hundreds of dollars to enter competition. Per bottle. Per bottle. Not to mention the ones that now have marketing categories, right? Best label, best package design, best campaign. All right. Subjectivity aside, they have done something that makes them even worse. And that would be? Allowing people to submit private picks private selections to the competitions and what i mean by that is we could take our amazing one of the two amazing four roses picks we did this year and if we wanted to pay the hundreds of dollars to submit it we could submit it okay so take a four roses pick we could submit it as bourbon and banter okay and we could win an award and we could tout this right and you like, oh, that's great. Everybody, four rows. No, no, you can't do that. And now people are submitting maker's marks, picks, you know, where they choose the staves, okay? And they're winning awards for it. What the fuck is this? Maker's Mark made the whiskey. You're right, you're right. Maker's Mark made the whiskey. You know, you're right. Maker's Mark made the whiskey. You know, you're fucking right. So how can some group submit a pick and to win this award? I mean, true, Henry McKenna, we know they did the same thing. They picked a cherry bear. We know that happens, but this should be limited to the distillery. It should be the juice that they make that they submit. The people who are buying these barrels should have no right to do it unless it is truly something that is never available. And I'm sorry, Maker's Mark Stave Selections, No. I mean, it undercuts the respectability of the whole idea, as little as there was to begin with. Yeah, you you mentioning the Four Roses barrel, the Russell's barrel. The Russell's barrel we picked was fantastic. It was fantastic. We submit that, and Bourbon Banner wins Best Bourbon. It's like, it's not a Bourbon and Banner bourbon. People are going to tear the shit out of us, like we're doing. I mean, I know people who have told me that these shows suck, blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly they're submitting a bourbon. And suddenly they're like, oh, these awards are the greatest thing on earth. Until you have skin in the game, you have a level logical mind. You know, so it's clever that these shows are allowing people to do this, right? You can think about, it. we have a single barrel club. We have, we do a really good job with our picks, okay? Um, taste is subjective. And, you know, I'm proud of what we do, right? And people buy them, people enjoy them, tell us that. And that's great. And sure, we could submit one and win and get a bigger head. I mean, I don't need a bigger head, right? Um, Physically, I'm speaking of. Yes. And, but what what does that do? I mean, other than make me feel better about myself. But, you know, to the, the point of this whole thing, I just don't even look at it anymore. I don't bother myself worrying about it. I actually, I don't even get as upset about it anymore because I know all this stuff is bullshit. All these awards are bullshit. We saw some stuff, uh, you know, this week that that craft distillery whiskey's aged for five months, you know, under a year, but it's got a dozen stickers on it from awards. It's like, well, clearly this was bought because the stuff tastes like shit. Oh yeah, it looked like somebody's bumper sticker gone it, it, crazy. It, did, it looked like the yeah, back of a 1973 Pinto. Yeah, exactly what it looked like. <laughs> You know, and so I'm like, this is fucking, it, it, there are, I have no, no, uh, uh, value to me coming from any kind of a best anything awards. Um, so I just don't even, I, I don't even get worked up about it anymore. So he, here's what I wonder is, so I'm sipping on a very tasty ancient, ancient age tenure. Ten. Whiskey, ten. Not the ancient, ancient 10 star, the no. 10 No, the year. good stuff, the good stuff. The 10 year. For our ancient, ancient, er- ancient, 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 age. Well done. That's impressive. Let's go to the tape. Slow-mo playback. Ancient. ancient. I, 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 well, no, that was ancient. not an That was not an invitation. 
But I bet you I could take this, throw a little something else in it, make a nice blend, and smit it. Um, and lie. I mean, I'm sorry. All credibility that was lost is now even further lost. And I'm just calling bullshit. I'm hot. I This is usually your role. This is like we're turning the tables here. Yeah, it is. It but is because I'm sitting over here kind of a little and, calm. And, and then, then, if that's not bad enough, then they start sending out fucking press releases. Hey, look, this whiskey that we got from someone else won an award. Aren't we cool? You know, what the hell? You know, I'm, I'm sorry. Look, my, my car that I just bought is gorgeous, but it's mine, and I'm going to enter it into a contest. Sorry, Ford, Chrysler, Tesla. You get no credit for this because I put in my own floor mats, so therefore it's mine. Yes, WeatherTech doesn't get credit either. Or better yet, I picked six different options on the website than someone else did and therefore it's unique uh, i think it's i think pops all i'm going to tell you is when all these snowflakes go to hell they're going to melt all right moving on fucking celebrities so let's talk about scotty pippen's decision to get into the bourbon game with a new bourbon called digits bourbon i got a digit for him wait can you say that a little louder yeah i got a digit for him for those of you who are just tuning in listening without the audio and visual component bob is extending his middle finger in a very vulgar and threatening manner scotty who wants a fucking whiskey from scotty pippen you mean no tipping st- no no tipping no tip pippen. pippen i can't even yeah. say it yeah now that's a, that's a whole other thing not even related to that but we don't even want to go down that road <laughs> Look, folks, let me, I'll just say this right now. Having nothing to do with bourbon. If you're out, you're eating at a restaurant right now, number one, when you're going out and you're eating at a restaurant, someone's bringing you food, you should be tipping well to begin with. We just got out of a fucking pandemic, so don't take your cheap ass out to eat and not tip or tip poorly. And if they're bringing it to a curb, tip them. You still got to tip them. Somebody's back there making it. That's right. They're making shitty wages. They're, oh, well, they're all back to work. Well, they don't want to work. because Just don't even fucking start. Tip your wait staff. And we have heard from many people that a lot of athletes with massive contracts and huge amounts of money don't tip for shit. So, and Scotty Pippen earned the name No Tippin' Pippen. Maybe we'll get a cease and desist letter here. I don't fucking know. But nobody want, nobody gives a shit about a bourbon from Scotty Pippen. Chicago Bulls fans are going to go out and buy a, they're going to drink it in their, you know, in their Jordans and their, because whatever mm-hmm. you know and, and drink a bourbon from fucking scotty pippen uh, okay you know i don't want to see it from jordan either but at least i know he's a long time whiskey drinker cigar smoker um but yeah this is let's catch the wave and i don't know a lot about it i saw a little video it was cringy and because when he's sitting down talking about how his the distiller guy is his friend and you know what? I was I was less offended, or I was less uncomfortable with the Terry Bradshaw, and that's saying something. Yeah, and I'm uncomfortable with all of it. Right. So like you got Terry Bradshaw, Scottie Pippen, Peyton Manning, all people trying to become relevant again, and they're going into whiskey. Just fuck them. Not Still mention, waiting. Not to mention, I'll tell you what, we, we, we've talked to you guys about the Bourbon and Banter membership site, right? And we told you that you can join this place, and it's a great place to hang out. And there is some really funny shit that comes through. And on this thing of celebrities, we had one of our members, and I'm going to pull it up here, so bear with me, folks, because I don't remember. One of our members posted about a celebrity bourbon that he came across. Um, was this down in Texas? Is that where he was at? Yeah, it was. I think it was down in Texas. Yeah, so hold on. I almost, I almost got it here. I apologize, guys. So and he put a post. He said, I played roulette drinking curious on the house one, which, by the way, 10 fucking bonus points for that title right there. And he basically went into a liquor store and, you know, the manager told him about a new bottle that was there and he needed to get it, right? And it said, I figured the Texas whiskey distilled in Indiana, this has got to be some good juice. This reminds me of something, uh, let's see here, Alicotton Hollow said, um, it, it said, Whis- Kentucky whiskey aged in Texas for four years. That stuff was delicious. And he got this stuff, and he said it was fucking horrible. The name of it was Novacek 84. And he's like, I don't know who the fuck Novacek is. Turns out he's a football player. He's got a lot of awards, whatnot. But he decided that he needed to memorialize his life and create a bourbon. And it was absolutely god-awful from what I heard. So just don't do it. Um, and, you know, hey, Scotty, I hope he's successful. I hope he gets a lot of people who aren't drinking bourbon to drink that. 
and who realize at some point in time they've been taken for a ride. Because as Bob knows, he's introduced a lot of people to real bourbon, and they're like, holy shit, what have I been drinking all these years? Exactly, and you don't have to pay a lot for it. That's right. So, Scotty, congratulations on your attempt of killing our favorite category of alcohol. And let's get the fuck out. All right, so the last thing that I've got for this is, and I saw this today, and you're not going to believe this, folks, but I'm not going to bag directly on South Africa. Not this time. Really? No, I'm going after Japan this time. Uh Uh-oh. So I read today that alcohol will be banned at the Tokyo Olympics. Really? Now, the whole Olympics thing is, you know, a really hot topic because all these people are saying they should be canceled, right? A lot of people in Japan are up in arms that they haven't been canceled. But as you know, it's already been postponed once. You put all this money into it. And most countries, a lot of countries lose, lose their shirt on the Olympics as it is, even in a good year. So they've decided to ban alcohol because people in Japan are afraid that having alcohol at the Olympics will actually spread and make people spread the disease because the pandemic, because people will be less careful. They'll be inebriated. And what's interesting is that um, I think Asahi maybe, maybe the the Olympic uh, sponsor, alcohol sponsor, and they're actually okay with this, which is a very Japanese thing. You know, you guys probably don't know this, but I have a degree in Japanese studies of all terribly useful things when you live in Missouri. Um, I've spent several years over there. I love the culture, love everything about it, but they are very good in being united and understanding what's best for the people. So I get that sense of it, but looking at what happened in South Africa, looking what's happened other places, when you start banning liquor in any sort of environment, typically means people go out of their way to get it and tend to then overindulge and actually create the opposite effect of what you're trying to encourage, which is moderation or abstinence from that product as well. So it's going to be really interesting to see what they do, but we have seen time and time again that these outright bans of alcohol don't ever pay out the way that people expect them to be. It never works. Every time you do it, it backfires. Haven't people fucking learned about this shit? Let your athletes have a goddamn drink. They're going to have it anyway. Yeah. And what's going to happen is when they get out of the Olympics, people get out of the Olympic area. It's not going to be at the venues. They're going to get hammered everywhere else. And let me tell you, if you read my bio on the Bourbon Banter website, I talk about surviving the infamous Japanese drinking culture. Oh, my God, can they drink? It's just ridiculous. And so, fine. Maybe I can't buy a beer at the Olympic Stadium, but, man, they're going to be drinking like fishes everywhere else. And uh, I really hope that it doesn't backfire on them. So we'll see what happens. But, you know, I hope they have a successful Olympics and people stay safe. But um, I'm, I just, this shit makes me nervous, man. When you start saying, you cannot do this. No, no, no. It backfires. Doesn't That's work. Right. That's right. Doesn't work. You got anything you want to add to bullshit here, Bob? Well... You know, we were talking about awards, and we've fucking had it with all of these awards. So I'm putting it out right now, and Pops isn't completely aware of this, but goddamn it, the Bourbon Bullshit <laughs> Awards are coming from Bourbon and Banter, so all of the other people out there, the blogs and the writers and all the Instagram accounts and shit that are going to say, oh, well, we're tired of these awards too, so we're going to name the worst this, worst that. The Bourbon Bullshit Awards will hit very soon and letting you know the biggest bullshit in bourbon from Bourbon and Banter, the guys who brought you Bourbon Bullshit, the biggest and most honest podcast in bourbon. We're going to let it all out. We're gonna, and, and the award especially, I'm very excited about. I, we'll, we'll tell you what it is on the next episode, what we're leaning towards, but very excited about the kind of things that you're going to be. It could be... It could be a, a column still. It could be a, a, a mash tub. It could be a pot still. Could be a shape of a bottle. Could be. Who knows? Well, I, I, tell bet you you... What, I tell you the one thing there won't be. There will be no entry fees. We will not make a single dime off of this directly. And um, we feel that if we're going to award stuff, it shouldn't be subjective. It should be based on honesty and fact. And believe me, these things, when we say these things, people are going to say, you're damn right. That's a bunch of bullshit. That's right. Honest, factual, fact-based, right as you know it. 
from the most honest team in bourbon. So because this is coming, I've got to get serious for a moment. This is a, a plea, if you will. It's an, a big ask. Undoubtedly, this is going to get us in a lot of fucking trouble. So I invite you to become a patron. Go to patreon.com slash bourbon banter. Please sign up. When you sign up, you not only are going to be supporting us, putting money into our legal defense fund, but you're also going to become a member of our single barrel club. You So you will now have access to all the single barrels we're releasing. And I don't know if people know this, but when you are a member of the single barrel club, you actually get the bottles cheaper than retail. We don't make a single dollar off the sale of the bottle. We make money for our legal defense fund and some, some supporting websites and things like that through the fees, right? Um, but we also give you some pretty, pretty cool swag. And we don't make you wait six months like a lot of these other Patreon accounts. You get your thing right away. So if you want to come in, spend two months, and get the hell out of Dodge, it's going to happen. That's fine. Do what you want to do. You're not going to sleep well. You're going to feel bad about it, but you can do it. I'm not going to lie to you. But please come in, help support us, keep Bob and I free. I know you're all thinking about Brittany right now, but that's going to pass. Brittany's going to be okay. Think about Bob and Pops and the future of bourbon banter. Become a patron uh, sponsor and support us. Um, it's going to, every dollar, um, you know, I mean, a dollar doesn't feed Bob and I for a day or a month like some other charities will do, but it'll keep us out of jail. It'll keep this great content coming. And, you know, we survived South Africa because of y'all. Um, but the shitstorm that's going to come, um, we're going to need your support. That's right. So when we launch Bourbon and Banter Bail Bonds, we need you guys to come with us. The yeah. four Bs. I'm just saying 10 years ago, when I came up with Bourbon and Banter and this whole alliteration, or it's actually called the double explosive, I think is what they call it in branding. Who knew we were going to have so many different variants we could do for this. That's right. You know, so please uh, give, give generously. We appreciate it. Um, but if you don't want to give us any money, that's fine. Go online, podcast.bourbonbanter.com. Click through Apple's podcast, subscribe, leave a five-star review, write some glowing words, go to Spotify, subscribe, go to every other service, subscribe, tell your neighbors, tell your friends, um, and um, that'll help as well. So we want to thank you guys for tuning in uh, to this episode. Um, we have a lot of exciting things coming from the Single Barrel Club all the way up to our 10th anniversary celebration, which, by the way, is going to last the whole fucking year. Um, so we're going to have a lot of cool things coming um, that you're not going to want to miss. So please do that. And once again, you've got feedback for this podcast, good, bad, or whatever, drop it at podcast at bourbonbanter.com. We will promise you, guarantee you, make sure that we will read every email, even the bad ones, before we delete it, right? And those of you guys who love us, you never know when we're going to drop a name, give you something special. So please do that. We really appreciate it. And for myself, um, you know, 10 years ago when I started this whole thing, I had no idea where we were going. So thank you from uh, the bottom of my bourbon barrel uh, for your support. And uh, I hope to uh, be able to do this live uh, from outside of prison sale for months to come. Bob, any, any parting words? No, you got it. You got it. All right. Well, folks, thanks again. Uh, we appreciate it for making it to the end. And remember, folks, if you're going to drink. Drink curious. Well, what's your preference? Bourbon, if you got it. Bourbon from Kentucky. I should certainly fucking hope so.